think this is going to be the most interesting angle on the tank because <laughs> what you do is look at the environment around you through it and it closes it down very much like the camera you're holding. So what we have here is the closest thing to a real tank I think I'm probably going to build. Um, scaled up from a, an original toy tank uh, that was a, made from tin um, in the early, early part of the First World War. Um, what we have here is, I guess, the contemporary, a contemporary version, the plaything that's been scaled up to real, real life size. I, I think since I first came to art, the question of what materials I might use and what it is that I wanted to say, um, I feel like in many ways I'm still there trying to answer uh, that question. But what I do know and what I've come to accept is there's no rules. Um, uh, this is, this is self-inflicted. I can make the rules, I can break the rules. It's not about trying to uh, tell a true story, more about how the narrative is constructed and making that a visible aspect of the work. With the tank, it's timber and steel. So again, I'm hitting traditional materials, but I guess um, not at all uh, taking the role of the uh, master craftsman. The idea of the home as a, some kind of space of safety and security, I guess, in personal experience, doesn't exist. Um, and in that way, I was really looking um, for a way to express that idea of home as a contested space, as a, as a, as a territory of conflict. A work I'm looking, um, developing at the moment um, is another one is looking at the floor plans of um, particular crime scenes that have occurred inside the home. So again, trying to uncover those stories that don't get told, those things that are about the home gone wrong, <laughs> uh, those contradictory values as well that, that meaning can be undermined and contradicted um, by the materiality. And to me, that is the complexity that is um, the question of how things come together. The tank takes all of the attention of stalemate um, because of course it's a bit hard to miss but the carpet I think for me is actually the probably the most important element. It takes it, it's about contextualizing the tank from battlefield to domestic environment um, and this traditional Axminster carpet for me is, is the, the representation of home. Very early on, I found in the first time I went overseas that it was art that was the thing that connected me to the people I wanted to meet. Um, and, and finding that out and then being able to build on that and build on that. So continuing to travel, continuing uh, to meet people who have different ideas about not just art, but the world, I guess. This is Alice in Wonderland, one of the versions um, that has come with me to this studio. I remember the first time I read Alice, just how brave she seemed. Not just that she was on her own, but um, that all the things she shouldn't do, she seemed to want to do. And all of the characters she shouldn't have been spending that time with she she did spend time with and in the end seemed to kind of beat them at their own game. One week after Sculpture by the Sea um, is deinstalled. I can't even imagine <laughs> that at this point. But a week after that, the huge reward, and I must say you don't always get a reward no matter what you might have put in, um, is to uh, jump on a plane uh, and head to Europe. The other part of the scholarship, um, of course, is, is what has allowed me to get anywhere near this stage to 
really construct an object um, that will survive the conditions um, this object's heading into. It's not quite as fast as I would have liked, but um, it'll get there. Putting the tracks on makes such a, a big difference because at this stage it feels like a box, but when the tracks go on, that the tank really does start to emerge in, in a different way. But um, I'm going to need a new battery. Oh, so, okay, so he'll pick up, he's picking up Thursday and then keeping it on his truck. First thing Friday, so I don't have to be there. That's so useful. Another show finishes the next day and um, I was going to have to organise someone to go and take it down for me. <laughs> and, and my accommodation in Sydney doesn't start till the Sunday, so that's fantastic. So I've given myself two days to install and I hope that is enough. So once you finish your installation, just grab one of the crew members and um, just get them to sign off on it. And that when we finish. When you finish. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck with everything. Good luck. See you. I can't believe we've actually made it. The last few days have been intense, to say the least. As soon as it came out through the doors, it was like emerging from a kind of cave yesterday when we rolled it out to take onto the crane. And immediately it was like watching it shrink. Once it came out of my cave, of the studio, into the world, it just kind of diminished. It became that toy again, whereas in the studio, it really has felt like a tank, I think, <laughs> over the last week. We're going to have to pick up the tank and put it on top of the carpet once we've got the carpet spread out. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, so the carpet is... So the carpet's the, the base. It's the ground. There's it's no the, footings from yeah. the tank. I'd like to nestle it more back in here. That's exactly why I think this is the perfect place for you to actually set the carpet out here. So the idea of the site was to have the carpet appearing to almost come from the rocks rather than be an island on its own. It's so, like, imagine if you pointed the gun that way. It's a different work altogether, isn't it? It's like the invader instead of the defender. Originally, you saw the tank with the galvanised steel on the outside, and I think... Um, the difference was immediate. As soon as the, the steel was gone, it immediately aged it. And um, the form, the friendliness of the form, the softness of that kid's toy, the original kid's toy came back. So the crane will lift that up and then we're basically ready to um, start with the sandbags and bring all these pieces um, together. Oh, he's coming, he's turning around. Come my way, he's got a crane hook on. That's always a good yeah. sign. He's still very much under orders. Um. Once it gets put down, these come off. Once it's off the... Okay. And then it's manual after that in okay. terms of lifting to get the bottom frame out. Right. Yep. I assume all the frame, yeah, it hasn't been unbolted, I assume. <laughs> Slide the barrel into the tank, Sam. I reckon then we take off the plastic and it will not scratch. Okay. And when we put it in, I'd quite like to test what it looks like not going directly straight out but on a slight angle. So I'm going to get in the tank 
and then jump out and have a look and go back in and we'll fix it in place at that point. Cool. It's baking. Baked tank. Careful, careful, careful. Yep. I, I think it's more dynamic with it on an angle. I'd like to do the side ones well, but the structure doesn't allow that. It's got to be tied really down really well because it looks a bit prone from this angle. Does it? It looks like it's... St what do you mean? There's too much movement. Um, no, no. People are going to love to jump on it. And what would happen if they did? Well, you want to have, you want to have faith in your fixings, is all I can say. The bracing goes around here, we'll go around um, the top gun and then loop around the crossbar here and back around the bottom so they actually get tied together. Working on the inside you feel completely blind um, to what's happening outside um, so you do end up in this screaming match between the person outside uh, trying to coordinate um, what's happening but I can't see it so I will have to go out and have a look. So this is inside outside, this is the transition zone and people outside find it hilarious to see a head popping out of a tank. Okay. Thinking too much about it. I might be. I just, because I've been playing with the studio, once it's out here, I just thought I'd ask the person who just saw it for the first time, go, oh, that gun's too long. I, I personally think it's okay. That's I all mean, right? I wouldn't have picked up on it. I mean, and I don't really sort of pick up on it when you mention it as well. Okay. Well, that works for the threaded steel. Can I just run up there for a minute? Hi, folks. Hiya. Do you mind if I ask you a quick question? Sure. As, as onlookers, yes. um, I'm making this tank and I'm trying to position the front gun. Yes. Are you English? Yes. This is perfect for the First World War <laughs> English tank, isn't it? I'm wondering, in your first opinion, should the gun go straight or on an angle? Or should it point at something? Uh, something specific, yeah. It has to stay about level. Okay. I would have said straight. I would have said straight. I would have said straight. Thank you so you much. It will be at an angle depending on which side you're walking from when Thank you look you at so it. Thank you so much. It was straight. It's just when I got here, I started going, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many other things going on. I could do anything. Thank you so much for your time. No <laughs> Have a great day. I'm getting all the answers from everyone else. It's good. Response is, no, it's not too long. And it, it could be, should be straight because it will be on an angle no matter what, depending on where you're looking at it from. So we're straightening it up. Um, I got a bit excited about angles. Um, suddenly it's all very new, but we're going to put the guide on now. It'll be straight and I can already start to see. Hello, <laughs> here we are, uh, out of the beach clothes, out of the studio clothes, and um, we've arrived from Canberra at the Sydney airport, um, preparing for our flight um, off to Europe in three hours. We're early, um, which is a new one for me. I'm very excited. I don't care whether I've slept enough or not at this stage. <laughs> We've got plenty of time to do that on the plane. Um, and looking forward um, to landing in uh, Venice and getting straight into the Venice Biennale. last night in Berlin and the bags are packed and ready for an early flight. It's off to Rome which is the final destination on the itinerary so I'm starting to feel that combination of, of anticipation and excitement about 
about getting home. Really, it's been an extraordinary adventure. Um, Travelling through Europe, it's hard not to think about the way war comes to define us. In this context, I've started thinking about my tank at Bondi and wondering how the work might be perceived in a city like Berlin. Interesting uh, food for thought that I plan to take back to the studio in a week's time.